Should you use ChatGPT in 2025? Well, my answer to that might surprise you a little bit, but before we get into that, let's go and do a quick overview of everything that ChatGPT has to offer. First, of course, you have the standard chat interface, which is pretty common among most chatbots these days, but this is the thing that kind of made ChatGPT explode on the scene when it first came about, was this simple chat interface that allowed you to do pretty much anything with a simple chatbot. And there have been a lot of improvements added to ChatGPT in the time since. Up here at the top, you have access to the latest models. So if you click on this, you get all of the latest ones, which right now are GPT-4.0, 0 03, 0.3 Pro. This one is only accessible on the Pro uh, model. 0.4 Mini and 0.4 Mini High. Plus you have some other ones here, uh, 4.5, as well as GPT-4.1 and 4.1 Mini. This is the one that you will see in the free version of ChatGPT. So you have access to all of those. Plus you have access to projects on here on the side, you can start a new project or you can create a GPT. They kind of work in the similar way. Projects came about after Claude created something called Claude Projects. People liked it better than the GPTs that ChatGPT was doing. So ChatGPT created their own projects. Um, and the way these works is, is that they're customized prompts for specific use cases. And this is one of the most useful things I find myself doing uh, all the time. For instance, I just have this one sentence summarizer project where all I do is I just, you know, paste in a big wall of text here and it'll just give me a single sentence summary. Uh, that's a, an example of a really small project that I use here. GPTs work much the same way. One of the nice features more recently is that you now have the option of creating images inside of ChatGPT. We had that capability before with Dolly 3, uh, but Dolly 3 wasn't really good, at least not by current standards. And so this new version came out and it was significantly better, made a huge buzz on the internet. So if I wanted to say, give me a photo realistic image of a bee flying around a science fiction flower. I don't know, I'm just pulling random things out of my brain. And then here we have our image of a bee flying around a science fiction flower. It's actually a pretty good image if I do say so myself. Another feature that you get with ChatGPT is the ability to dictate text. So if I wanted to just say something into this mic, uh, I could just dictate it here, press the dictation button. And now I am dictating into this microphone. Please, ChatGPT, modify this image so that the flower is red and i just hit the check mark on that and the dictation has gone into into here and it, it dictated me saying and now i am dictating into this microphone so i can just remove that if i want to just go with the next command so if you want to use your voice to do these chats then you absolutely can but while that's going a feature that i really like that is even more impressive to me is the advanced voice mode which if you're on the plus plans or the free plans you don't get much of but if you're on the pro plan you get an unlimited amount of it and that's where you basically can have a conversation with the ai and it can mimic multiple voices as well as multiple expressions and emotions. It's really useful. I find it really helpful when I just want to talk through something that I'm brainstorming at the time and just get ideas and bounce things back and forth. And I've actually found myself using it much like Iron Man and Jarvis in the Iron Man movies because uh, I've actually found that to be a really useful use case for AI. Also within the chatbot here, you'll find a couple of other things. You can search the web. So if you select this, it'll now do a web search. So if I wanted to say, what is the status of the Iran-Israel war? It can give me up to date information about that. And yep, this is accurate as I'm recording this today on June 24th. But not only can you search the web, you can actually have it analyze different photos and files that you might have. So it can analyze images, it can analyze PDFs. So you can grab apps like uh, Google Drive or your Microsoft OneDrive and connect those so that you can uh, interact with documents there. And that's the general gist of what ChatGPT can do. The really important aspect of ChatGPT and other chatbots like it is the fact that it makes things really simple. 
Simplicity is really important. I, I don't think we should discourage that. Oh, and by the way, I did also forget to mention Deep Research, which is one of the best researching tools out there in ChatGPT. It's one of the most thorough. I once asked it a question, uh, asked it to research something for me, and it gave me a 25,000 word response, which is essentially a small book. Yeah, so simplicity is a really important thing with chatbots, and it does do that. However, would I actually recommend to most people that they use ChatGPT in uh, the writing process? And my answer to that is no. The main reason for that is because it's actually lacking a lot of features. It, uh, you're probably overspending on it. Now, let me explain. Let's go to the pricing for ChatGPT. Now there is a free tier. Now you're, of course, because it's free, you're not gonna be overspending on that, but you're only given access to GPT 4.1 mini and some limited access to GPT 4.0 and 0.4 mini and deep research. But this is a, you know, a decent th option for you. You can absolutely use ChatGPT for the free version, uh, but keep in mind that you're gonna be throttled pretty heavily meaning that you won't be able to get much out before ChatGPT says, okay, you're done, wait a little bit before you can do more. The same is actually true for the Plus plan, which is $20 a month. Now, I rarely run into this, but I'm not using ChatGPT that heavily. But if you have the $20 a month plan, you will run into some throttling if you overuse it too much. And this is why I think that a lot of people are overspending because you spend 20 bucks a month, you should expect to get at least $20 worth of prompting. If I were to go into the API, which I'll show you in a minute, it would take me quite a while before I get to that $20. And so sometimes I think it's actually best to pay as you go when you are working with AI. Now there is the $200 a month plan, which I understand for most people is not going to be something that you need. I actually have one, but only because OpenAI gifted me one just for one year, just so I could play with it and see uh, how I like it. Now it does have a lot of cool things in the pro plane. You do get unlimited access to advanced voice as well as pretty much all of the models. There are some things that are still throttled like deep research and Sora video generation and uh, things like that. Is it worth $200 a month? Unlikely. I would bet that even if you're using AI pretty heavily, most people will not be spending more than $200 a month through an API on a case-by-case you know, -case basis where you're paying as you go. If you pay as you go, that might seem like some to be a the worst financial option, but often it isn't. Especially, you know, $200 a month, really it's unlikely that you're gonna be spending more than that through an API. So for most people I say, do not get the, the pro plan, but there are other reasons besides pricing that I think you should consider other options. Let me show you the OpenAI Playground. So this is something that you can access. This is, uh, people will call this the playground, the platform, OpenAI's platform. Uh, you'll also hear it referred to as OpenAI's API. And that is because this is where the developers come to sort of hook their tools into OpenAI's models. And you can come in here and test your prompts and do all kinds of stuff. But what most people don't realize is that if you come into this API or uh, OpenAI's playground, you get pretty much everything else that ChatGPT offers, everything that ChatGPT offers. The only difference is that instead of paying 20 bucks a month for it or $200 a month, then you're only spending as you go. So anytime you make a prompt, it will spend a teeny tiny little bit of money. Now, the amount of money that is spent is not very much. And like I said, it would be a little bit difficult for you to get to that $20, much less the $200 a month, unless you're really a heavy power user of these models. Uh, but let me show you some of the advantages of using an API over ChatGPT. Uh, in addition to pricing, which I do think is actually better for most people. Uh, and first of all, you have access to more models. So if we come here, I can select GPT 4.1, but then we also have 4.1 mini and all of these and different versions of the same model, plus all of the different uh, models here. Now, some of these, you do have to verify your organization to use. That's totally fine. That's not too hard to do. I just haven't done it because I'm lazy. But you also, you can go way back to some really older models and you can also include fine-tuned models in here if you're doing fine-tuned models, which I haven't done a video on that in a long time, mostly because I don't see it as a necessary step for most authors these days or as a overly complicated step for most authors these days. The bottom line is you have access to more models here. Plus you have access to things like temperature, which increases or decreases the amount of predictability or um, creativity that AI has. So if I raise this a little bit, it's actually gonna give me different responses than if I lowered it a little bit. If I lower it, it's gonna get more predictable. If I raise it, it's gonna be a little bit more unpredictable. Some people call this more creative, etc. You can also affect max tokens and top P here. You can also specify your 
system message as well as your regular chat and then everything here reacts more or less the same as a regular chat in ChatGPT. You can even also compare. So if I select compare, I can run the same prompts with two different models to see which one I think performs better. Plus you have access to pretty much everything you would have in ChatGPT, including over here on the left, images. You can uh, create images with uh, OpenAI's Playground. You can do like real-time conversation. Um, you can have assistance, which is essentially the same as a GPT or a project. And then we have text-to-speech. So this is where you can dictate stuff. All of that is here. And each of these come with, again, more models to test. You can have additional instructions here that you don't get in ChatGPT. You can specify the speed and the response format that you want. There's just lots and lots of cool stuff that you can do here. In fact, this is a great way to work on audiobooks. If you want a specific tone of voice for specific chapters and things like that, you can have your text spoken here. So this is OpenAI's own platform and they have their own models. There are other platforms, like most notably here is, this one's called OpenRouter at OpenRouter.ai. It's useful because it has access to not just ChatGPT's models, but really most of the models that are online right now, you can find them here in OpenRouter. It doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that you'll get through ChatGPT or the OpenAI Playground, uh, like image generation and, and stuff like that. But in terms of the actual text generating models, you can pretty much get them all here. So if I go to, if we want to add a model to open router and I want to look at all of the open AI models, I can see that they're all here. These go pretty far back too. So there's also a wider diversity of models here. And if I pick one, like let's say we pick GPT 4.1, I can also have access to a lot of those same parameters like temperature and top P here inside of open router. And I do recommend to most authors that they have a chatbot somewhere, a simple chatbot, because they are useful as a sort of catch-all for any of your AI needs. Uh, so not if you're having a specific workflow or anything for a specific task, but if you just like, oh, I just want to know like the answer to such and such question and you just ask it, or I just want to brainstorm this really small thing. You just go and you run a prompt and it's really nice to have something simple. But do I recommend that that chatbot be ChatGPT? Actually don't. And the reason for that is because first of all, I can get everything I need from ChatGPT through the API and I won't be charged anything until I use the API, which means in, if I'm not using it too frequently, I'm not wasting money on a ChatGPT subscription. I'm instead just paying a few cents here or there whenever I need them. And the second reason is because I, there is actually a chatbot that I like a lot more. This is a personal preference, but I find perplexity, but I find perplexity to be a much better chatbot interface. Now perplexity, as some of you know, especially if you watched my video I made about it not too long ago, perplexity is a search-based AI tool. So it is a chatbot like most of the others, but it is primarily geared for search. And I find it to be absolutely phenomenal and easily the best one of all of the searching chatbots out there. It's easily the best one. Um, but let's say you wanted to use it as not a search engine and just as a text generator, like say you wanted to use it for writing. That's actually easy to do in perplexity. All you do is come over here to set sources for search. You click on this and you make sure to toggle off the web because you can search web, academic papers, discussions and opinions for social, as well as finance. Um, so if you turn these on, it'll search through all of those. Uh, but you can also just turn them off and now it's just a regular chatbot, just like ChatGPT. And I find Perplexity just to have way more features that I like. Go Again, go check out my video on Perplexity that I did a while back uh, if you find that useful. So this is what I personally use instead and I will be canceling pretty much all of my chatbot subscriptions because again, I, if I need them, I can go to the API to get them. But as far as having that catch-all, that simple chatbot interface, I'm really, for me personally, I boiled it down to perplexity myself. If you found this useful uh, and you want more access to me to ask me questions or whatever, you can go and join the Story Hacker Gold group down below. It just opened up and it won't be open for too long uh, for enrollment. So go check that out. I now do two sessions per week uh, where you can come and ask me questions and just hang out with me uh, every week, uh, among other things that we have in there. So go check that out and I will see you there.